Google Trends. Since 2007, there's been a website here in the UK, google.co.uk slash trends, that has anonymized aggregate data on what people are searching for. You'll go onto this website and you'll put a term in and it will show you search interest over time. Uh, let's go to the tool and hopefully the Wi-Fi will, will stick with us. Uh, Google Trends UK, so google.co.uk slash trends, hurrah. Uh, I think I'm, there we go. So we're seeing here a 250 list of trending stories. Think about that in the same way you'd look at Twitter, what's on the hashtag. Uh, the UK, Ireland and Australia are the only countries in the world where football and sport always dominates. Let's say you're not that as interested in football though. Go up here to the top and click on all categories. That would be the entertainment stories right now in the UK. On there also you've got health, business, science. It's just a way of seeing what are the trending stories coming out right now. More useful though, the icon on the top left, click on that. I'm going to put a word in here which rocked my mum's world last year, plastic bags. I'm doing an environmental story and I want to see if the changes in legislation, where we all had to pay five pence for a bag, led to people going online to look for more information. I've typed the word in, always click on the word that it recognises because uh, that captures misspellings and abbreviations, in this case plastic bags. Uh, you can get UK data down to England, Wales, Scotland, Northern Ireland level at the moment, which is not great, and we're seeing if we can get that down to city level. But let's just look at UK for now. And there you'll see when it comes out, there you go, two significant spikes. The first spike on the left, when uh, Scotland introduced the legislation, and then the spike further along is when England caught up some years later. If you are the Guardian newspaper and you want this graph to complement your article, go down here to this icon here, the back and forth arrow, the embed code, and it comes up with the code that you can use there. If you're the BBC and you don't embed, they screen grab this and treat it as a JPEG. If you're Time magazine and you think this looks ugly, you're allowed to think that, Go up here to the top right, click on those three dots, and you've got the option to download it as a CSV. So how are journalists and newsrooms using this tool already? Well, some of you might be familiar with this graph. This is one I built ahead of the UK general election last year. At the top there, we're looking at the political leaders in the United Kingdom over the 30-day period. Uh, this is before the election itself. So any guesses as to why there might be two noticeable spikes? Why might people suddenly go onto search engines? And by the way, this now looks at YouTube, Google News, and Google Search. Why would they be going on to look for more information at one particular point? TV debates. So in a country like the UK, people are watching TV, and then they're going onto their mobile first. So you can do this yourself. Um, what we did as a pilot is provide the top 10 questions people were searching for during the UK election. These are the top 10 questions people were searching for during the ITV news debate. I think though, question four, what is a referendum? Question nine, what is austerity? For me, the most important questions on there. Three weeks before the general election. So we shared these questions with publishers. This is the Guardian, they took them with one line answered what austerity meant, and then of course wrote a qualified piece about why austerity is a big issue in the debate. I showed you this earlier, but this is the EU referendum so far. Uh, before the debate and before the campaign officially begun, already the number one question in the UK referring to the EU referendum was, what does the word Brexit mean? A word that's already being used in TV and radio cues and headlines, in political speeches, in tweets. Uh, we've seen the what is Brexit question dip to number two, and the number one is who can vote or how can I vote. Um, 
this is interesting. The blue uh, search line shows you interest in the Leave EU campaign. It is not showing you a poll, and it is not showing you, though, search sentiment. It's not saying more people will leave than stay. It's just saying there's more interest in the blue line than in the red line. This is a map that we created with uh, BuzzFeed, an independent academic, ahead of the general election that looks at search interest in the political leaders in the different constituencies across the UK. Uh, one publisher said, this is a poll. 